Ravi Kumar. I'm with NetSpeed Systems. Uh, this afternoon, we have a very interesting uh, you know, talk. We call it Fireside Chat by Sundari Mitra, who's the co-founder and CEO of NetSpeed Systems, and Mr. Sugimoto-san, who is the CTO and board member of NSI Techs, which is really a spin-off from Denso. He's been in Denso as a CTO, uh, working on automotive chips for many years. And uh, they are going to talk about automotive safety and reliability. A very interesting uh, conversation. I want to welcome you for this and have uh, enjoy the discussion. And please feel free to ask questions at the end. Thank you. Thank you. Um, hey, Ravi. Um, thank you very much for making this introduction. And I would like to thank DAC for giving us an opportunity to actually be able to, um, you know, sit down as partners. Um, and uh, I would like to kind of, you got an introduction on Sugimoto-san, uh, but we as a company have had a pleasure of uh, working with him uh, on the front side of doing ADAS and automotive SOCs. Uh, I would like to talk to you today a little bit about, um, you know, the architecture, the design, and get Sugimoto-san's expert opinions on you know, some of the safety and the ADAS requirements mm -hmm. of these SOCs. Okay, Larry, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, looking forward to good uh, chat. He's a Sundar San, uh, expert in SOC design architecture. Uh, automatic driving is a tool that needs advanced SOC and related technology. So that I'm very excited to, to talk about that today. All right. Um, so. As I think all of us know, one of the fastest growing market segments uh, in the semiconductor industry or for the semiconductor industry is really the ADAS and automotive SOCs. Um, I'm sure you've heard about the market share and how the number of SOCs in an automotive uh, platform or inside a car are going to be increasing from their present number to probably about you know, 10x more in the next few years. Um, one of the things that is of paramount importance over there is safety, because any error, any mistake can be catastrophic. So um, I would like to kind of talk to you about that. Uh, the other thing is the, uh, the complexity of these SOCs is different from what we are used to designing, which kind of you know, begs the question of, do we have the right automation? Do we have the right methodology to actually build these chips in a fast and efficient manner? So, mm -hmm. Sugimoto-san, I mean, you are an expert in this area. Can you mm -hmm. share some insights, please? Mm -hmm. So, Sundar-san, so automotive industry is going to the huge shift, uh, and uh, ADAS and automotive driving. I show the some example of uh, system architecture here. Uh, is uh, one of the uh, big reason for it. Over the past few years, I've seen the major three trend. So firstly, though, of course, there's many, many things, and uh, I uh, show the some of them. But uh, these three major is the first is the move from the ASSP, so-called standard products, to other way, including the ASICs, uh, because many of the OEM and the tier ones has uh, has the specific performance, safety, and the power goals. We started to achieve this to the SSP in past and modifying them to our needs uh, with uh, many, many discussions with the semiconductor vendors, maybe the someone is here. Uh, yeah? so, 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 you know, I don't know if you guys got the dig that he just made at us semiconductor manufacturers. He said that the tier ones have not taken the feedback. The tier one feedback has not been absorbed by the semiconductor guys, which is forcing them to become more vertical and do these designs themselves. Hmm. Right. Yeah, of course, there are a very good relation with the same the vendors and many, many discussions with them. But the difficulty is that now the direction for the each OEM and the tier one is a little bit different, mm -hmm. depends on the, their system concept or their implementation. So the final is it is very difficult to consolidate it to the standard one. True. To, uh, with uh, enough efficiency okay. and the design time. Awesome. Okay. Okay, and the second thing is uh, requirement, uh, to be met, uh, requirement to be requirement method. I mean that uh, uh, not the bottom-up uh, solution, but the top-down design flow. 
the best architect I ever worked with, uh, they find the chip to the use case performance, of course. Uh, but uh, sometimes uh, we seem that to have uh, fallen into the trap of the hand tuning, uh, because uh, every aspect of the chip in the past, we are able to get away with it, our uh, very, very um, detailed tuning for every design trade-off. Uh, uh, in past, it is good uh, because uh, we are reusing just a few IPs or a few blocks, so it is easy to maintain uh, optimal one by manually. But uh, now that you are using the sometimes uh, several 10 IPs and uh, sometimes uh, several hundred, yes. so it is almost uh, impossible to, manual, to apply the manual approach to building the optimal socks. Uh, that is uh, only the not time consuming, but also the suboptimal. That is our but, issue. So it's fitting that we are getting this comment from Sugimoto-san at the Design Automation Conference. Uh, he is, 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 I think, giving us all a message, saying we need to focus on more automation because these chips are complex to put together. And because these, this particular market segment is innovating at such a fast pace, they want to rely on more automation and tooling to get this done. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, now that we have many, many design parameters, uh, that is our trade-off uh, relation. Right. So with us uh, automation, we are almost uh, impossible to get uh, optimum balance, balance point of the, these parameters uh, for the two days. Very, very complex socks. Great. Yeah, and the third thing is a uh, move trend for the heterogeneous computing uh, because uh, we need the more and the more performance. Mm -hmm. And uh, this uh, increase of the performance is uh, achieved not just uh, by turning the mass CPUs or the sometimes the GPUs, uh, but uh, rather than the some types of the mix and uh, computing elements together uh, to ensure that uh, underlining the architecture treats all these compute elements equally. So we in SATX as a expertise and a very successful tier one vendor has a credible track record in the creation of the automotive semiconductors. So these complex autonomous driving socks are forcing the changes to the design methodology itself. Okay. Um, so when you talk about a requirements-driven uh, chip design, mm -hmm. could you elaborate that uh, on that a little bit? What do you mean by you know requirements-driven A, and what are some of the other factors that we need to take into account as okay. we are doing this? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, because uh, we need to integrate the multiple subsystem into one system, uh, uh -huh. mainly the, usually the SOC. Mm -hmm. So it needs to be architects for the system level optimization, mm -hmm. uh, not a subsystem, to achieve the best in class performance and efficiency. So it, in the, this is a clear challenge, change in design methodology uh, compared to the past, uh, which was focused very pretty much at the chip level or the subsystem level. Right, I agree with you. It's interesting that uh, we call them SOC, a system on chip, mm -hmm. but our methodologies haven't quite embraced the systemness of uh, putting chips together. And I think you bring up a really good point. Um, you know, what about uh, you know? Let's focus a little bit on the safety mm -hmm. um, and ADAS requirements. W w can you say something about that, please? Okay, so for the safety and also the security. We learned that uh, it is not effective to the safety and the sometimes reliability mm -hmm. into our SOC design after the fact. We have to design the safety and the reliability in the starting of the, the, the design, I mean the architecture level. So to this bring out the need for the good architectural design solution or because uh, we need to uh, first, uh, try to iterate the many uh, types of the balance point, mm -hmm. uh, not only for the implementation, but for the architectures. Absolutely, because I think safety and reliability are a trade-off. They impose on the area, they impose on performance, but they are a must-have. And how do you make those trade-offs? So as you reflect on this, are there like two or three specific points that you want to kind of call out, uh, which are important for the architecture design of uh, these kinds of SOCs? Mm -hmm. So architectural design solution for, especially for the automotive application must be capable of the, first is uh, again the heterogeneous computing 
are uh, including the many compute elements and uh, important thing is the coherency. Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise, the uh, software is too complex to true. maintain the hardware. Right. So second one is uh, delivering, the, delivering the high quality of service. Mm. Uh, not only for the interconnect, but uh, to, across the types of all workloads in the system. And uh, finally, the, of course, uh, this is automotive. So uh, SLD, uh, I mean the ISO 26262 certified is important. So first two capabilities are also important to achieve the enough efficiency uh, and also the, to get the low power consumption. Okay, so we've thrown out a bunch of architectural terms over here. Uh, what are some of the, the practical impl impl you know, implications of taking whatever you have said and actually applying it to the SOC design method? Mm -hmm. So, of course, there are many things. But uh, first thing is uh, compute power because uh, not only for the functionality, but for the safety to getting the enough information from the sensor mm -hmm. is very important. Mm -hmm. For example, the today's automatic driving car uses a, a camera, and right. that is one of the sensor. Okay. And to bring out the useful information from the sensor is very important. Mm -hmm. okay. That's uh, not only the camera, but also the radar, radar and sometimes the other sensors mm -hmm. uh, requires a very, very high computation power to e extract the useful information. And uh, that is the reason that we are very inter interested in the heterogeneous computing, because uh, I think that uh, that is the only way to achieve the enough performance mm -hmm. and uh, the limitation of the power consumption, reliability, or such kind of things. And of course, uh, it's mm, important uh, to have our system level consistency, so such kind of QoS or such kind of functionality is very important. And again, the, of course, the safety requirements, SLD or the ISO 26262 certified, is uh, also the one of the uh, major issues. Okay. So it's, again, if I could summarize what you said, and please correct me if I'm wrong, uh, I think what you talked about is mm -hmm. these chips are going to be complex. They are complex. They're going to get more complex uh, as generations proceed. Uh, heterogeneous compute um, is the era of the future of these kinds of chips. Uh, we need methods that can enable getting these designs done correct and getting them done fast. And as we are doing all this, we got to be acutely aware of the safety and security requirements. Mm. And all these interplay and there are trade-offs that need to be made across all of these to get, mm -hmm. get the right chip into the hands of our tier ones. Yeah, right. absolutely. OK. All right. Um, so, Sugimito san, talk to us a little bit about the trends without compromising any confidentiality. What, what are some of the trends that you see going forward from mm -hmm. the position that you are in? Okay, I think so, so one important thing is the standardization of the software platform or the framework. Mm -hmm. uh, because the EDAS and the automatic driving area are still evolving quickly. So functional requirement will be changing at least uh, these several years, and maybe more. Mm -hmm. So on the other hand, uh, in automotive case, the hardware development cycle is wrong. wrong. So it means that it is almost impossible to predict the true software demand or the characteristics as the hardware design time. Mm -hmm. So I think that the standardization of the software platform is uh, only the way to use the advanced hardware more aggressively in future. Awesome. Yeah. This is great information. Um, all right. So, so at this point, I mean, uh, you know, we will, um, you know, perhaps I can get you to ask me a few questions. Mm -hmm. and okay. All so right. can I ask you some questions? Absolutely. So you are uh, the uh, SOC. Yeah, expert SOC designer, and now the IP provider. So what do you see as a challenge to SOC design uh, going further, more importantly in the advanced automotive socks? Okay. Um, so I'm going to take you guys back in time a little bit to when I started NetSpeed Systems. Um, 
I get asked this question saying, why did I start another fabric company? And um, uh, when I looked at uh, the marketplace about six or seven years ago, uh, I realized that the compute platform of choice for everyone was mobile computing. So there was an application specific processor that was driving the semiconductor industry forward. Right? And I saw then that the future is going to be more along these lines where the tier ones, for example, the automotive tier ones would demand that we have something optimized for automotive platforms. You see AI as another market segment that is looking for AI optimized SOCs. And I felt that there was something missing in our industry in terms of the method mm -hmm. of assembling these SOCs, getting them together so that they are workload optimized. Mm. So that you know, people can actually plug them in and not feel that they're compromising on power, compromising on security, compromising on anything, right? So what does it lend itself to? I just defined heterogeneity for you. Heterogeneous means that you can put in elements that have different behavior patterns mm -hmm. all together and still get the best performance for your specific application. And that is how I see the industry moving forward. Okay, right. thank you. So you mentioned that the heterogeneous computing is the one is uh, uh, change. So is it a specific functionality or a specific Mm, concept to adapt to the more effective heterogeneous computing in the world. Okay, so, so let's take the example of uh, the ADAS or autonomous vehicle space. What are some of the heterogeneous attributes that you pointed out mm -hmm. just a little while ago? You talked about end-to-end -end quality of service mm -hmm. across a, a processor, across a GPU, across sensors, so you want some real-time decision-making in a heterogeneous platform. Mm -hmm. uh, you talked about safety as being something that cannot be patched on top. It needs to be architected from day one because it is going to impact the performance of your SOC. So requiring ISO compliance, ISO 26262, being ASIL D certified comes at a price. And unless you have factored that in early on when you're defining the architecture of your automotive SOC, you're not going to be able to hit the performance metrics. Mm. Right, so when I look at that, I look at coherency, uh, access to memory, all being part of that equation and being an end-to-end -end solution. Mm -hmm. It needs to go from the processing agent to memory and it needs to be guaranteed across different workloads. So that's kind of how I see the compute paradigm. Okay. Uh, for these SOCs. Yeah, thank you very much. I agree that uh, consistency from the architecture level to the implementation level is very right. important. Right, so essentially we talked about a system level fabric, not fragments that are put together, because then end to end the solution may not work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. absolutely. So, um, you know, that was some of the exchanges that we um, have discussed so far. We can continue this dialogue but I would prefer to open it up to some questions, please. Um. Please, yep. Um, sorry, looks like the, the question microphone's not on. Hello? Okay. Yeah. Hi, my name is Junko Yoshida, EE Times. Um, I have a question for both of you. Sugimoto-san actually mentioned the importance of the software, standardization of software framework. Can you elaborate what you mean by that and how, uh, from the chip designer's point of view, how do you respond, what do you see, what do you see on the market or what you see on the horizon? Can, can you explain that a little bit? Sure. Okay. So, of course, there are many types of the definition for the software framework. Uh, but the important thing is uh, today, for example, uh, this is a chart uh, to show the whole automatic language system. So we start to develop the, this system with a standard PC environment because our initial design is for the uh, algorithms or the software architecture. And after that, so we port to the, this implementation to the actual SOX or the system. Uh, but uh, today, uh, if we choose the different IPs, uh, we need to 
modify or the slightly change the software implementation because many IP has a different software framework and sometimes a different performance characteristics. Of course, uh, these are not completely the same because uh, we want to more performance and sometimes uh, we need to optimize uh, some part of the software to fit to the final implementation. But it is okay, but 80% uh, of the software is not so uh, computing performance hungry. So we, want, we, don't, we do not want to change this soft, software code from the initial architecture or the algorithm design to the final implementation because uh, sometimes uh, this kind of the optimization work uh, cause uh, many, many bugs in the software design. Uh, and uh, as you know, the quality of the software is uh, one of the very big uh, requirement, in, especially in the automotive area. So that is a, a big reason that we, I think the uh, software framework standardization is important. So, uh, so to kind of pick up on that, uh, when the software framework has a well-defined um, legacy requirement. The hardware has to be adaptable. It has to be built on a platform that allows for the flexibility, right? And a scalable fabric that can be tuned for different types of IPs, uh, very quickly be optimized, uh, is a, a requirement. Otherwise, chip designs will take forever. Right? And that's how you know, we come in with the kind of IP that we have uh, created at NetSpeed. As I'm listening to your discussion of heterogeneous computing, combining different building blocks, I kind of hear as a 2.5D interposer design fan uh, that uh, you can also incorporate die-level IP in your architecture. Can you comment on this point what you can do today, what you can uh, execute in future. Okay, so there's a many, many trade-off uh, between the multi-chip solution and the one-chip solution. Uh, a, basically, the today, uh, we direct to the multi-chip solution, uh, not only for the actual different package, but also the one package, so so-called SIP or that kind of things. Uh, because uh, now, the, yeah, again, the, we are into to the heterogeneous computing area. And uh, sometimes uh, each comp element has a different requirement for, to optimize uh, implementation. So sometimes, uh, yeah, uh, wire density is important. Uh, sometimes the transistor speed is important. So optimally, we need to choose a different process node or the process technology for each computer element. In that case, so of course, uh, uh, multi-tip solution is very good to total efficiency point of view. But of course, uh, in past, uh, the cost and also the overhead to using the multi-tip solution is very huge. Uh, for example, the today we are using the two-chip solution connected via the PCI Express. Uh, but, uh, of course, the communication latency is uh, huge, mm -hmm. and uh, also the interposer cost is uh, high. But uh, on the other hand, uh, now that there's uh, many, many technology, including the uh, TSV or the such kind of things, and we, at least for the bandwidth point of view, uh, we can uh, get uh, enough uh, bandwidth, uh, even if the uh, interchip conne uh, connection. So uh, I think that uh, multi-tip solution uh, is a uh, clear. Uh, direction for the future automo uh, automotive uh, socks. No, I, I absolutely agree. Um, in fact, I was telling Sugimura san earlier that if he and I could disagree on this panel, it would make it more exciting for all of you. But we are, we both just seem to be in sync because I do believe that die disaggregation, using of interposer, using TSVs as technologies become more expensive as getting yield higher for bigger dyes becomes more expensive, we are all going to master how to do the known good dye, and this technology is going to become prevalent in the industry. Right. So. Anyway. Hi. Uh, you mentioned uh, ISO 26262 and some other standards. Uh, can you uh, elaborate on what kind of challenges that uh, puts onto the uh, design process 
and what you would need from IP vendors or, uh, or your tool vendors to assist in that? Okay, so most, of imp most important thing is uh, design process, as we know. So final safety goal is depends on the each system, especially for the automatic driving, there's a many, many functionality, and uh, that is uh, not uh, stable today. Uh, but the design process it is itself is very, very important. Because finally, the, of course, the, we analyze the system and the, to check that the uh, requirement is filled or not. But uh, to apply the, this kind of the method, including the FMEA or the FMEDA, the design process for the software tools and also, the, of course, the IP is the base of this work. So the safety concept in the early stage, uh, not only for the hardware, but the, uh, also the tools, uh, softwares, and the IPs is uh, very important. And uh, th uh, to be honest, uh, that is a big challenge for us because uh, sometimes uh, there's uh, no clear definition of what is uh, mandatory for this requirement. So we need to discuss uh, via the DIA or such kind of thing. So that is, uh, our, from my point of view, that our, uh, to making the DIA is uh, one of the key things in the early stage of the design. Absolutely. So, um, I mean, I think 26262 as a compliance is just the start. Uh, ultimately, it's all of our responsibility to make sure that chips that we design uh, that are being used by the consumers are safe, they're secure, because at risk is something very expensive, which is human life, uh, right? So uh, we believe that you absolutely need the processes so that you're there, but you then need metrics to convince yourself and your end customer that the product that they are building has enough guard band to safety, uh, because it does come at a price, right? You're increasing the area. Your, it is an impact on performance. So it is a trade-off. So any support we can get from the tool vendors to help us analyze this better, to help us make better decisions is, of course, welcome. So, hey, Chris. Chris Rowan. Um, you, uh, you note that the front end of these uh, automated driving systems are full of AI and neural network elements, all of the sensor processing and recognition and sensor fusing is likely to use a lot of these complex uh, statistical modeling methods. And so we then have two forms of extraordinary complexity, both the absolute silly complexity at the state of the art and the additional algorithmic complexity that comes from these statistical models. What are the key things you think about in verifying silicon and verifying systems that are unique to this mission critical deployment of neural network based statistical computing uh, mechanisms? Okay, that's a good question. Yes. Sir. So for the our, our important one important thing is uh, for the hardware complexity. Uh, again, the, in the hardware design time, we cannot finalize the system specification and the software itself. It means that the hardware should have enough uh, flexibility or the generality uh, of the verification. So it means that uh, still the hardware need to verify it very well uh, as of the context of the actual application. So to simplify the hardware is very, very, very important, I think, especially for the autobus driving area because the software is not uh, evolving, continue to evolve in future. For the system verification, uh, that is a no clear answer, but uh, uh, usually the we apply the top-down flow. Uh, usually the, in the automotive area, we call the uh, V-shaped development. And uh, that is a still, I think that that is a still work or because the final functionality of the automotive system is not so complex. Of course, that is a relatively complex than past, but still we can uh, check the level of the verification of the quality by applying the very detail of the uh, 
uh, tracing and uh, coverage of such kind of classic methodology. Thank you, Sugimura san. Um, uh, you know, I particularly don't have anything to add to beyond what Sugimura san said on this topic. Um, any other questions? Okay, I'm uh, being told that probably we are just out of time as well right now, so it's a good, good time to stop. Thank you very much for taking the time to come over here. I hope you enjoyed the conversation. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much and to audience and the back. Thank you.